Bishoku Tensei Rudius Children Fun Fact Compilation. Lucy Greyrat is the eldest sibling and the first daughter of Rudius and Sylphie. She's the only child who resembles her dad's hair color and also has red eyes with pointed ears like her elf mother. Lucy is a decent girl with a big assess attitude towards her siblings, yet on early age, Lucy has this behavior of running away from Rudius every time he approached. This is due to him being busy and barely around the house. She doesn't recognize him as her father, in fact. She once thought Orsted was her dad because of the similarity of his hair color to her mom. Though later on, she eventually fully recognizes Rudius as her father. She's married to Clive in the future, which is the son of Cliff Grimoire, and her great-grandmother, a lionelized dragon road. Lara Greyrat is the second oldest sibling and the daughter of Rudius and Roxy. She resembles her mother except for the tips of her hair which are similar to Rudius. Lara appears stoic, but she is actually quite mischievous, enjoying playing pranks on others, even hive-ranking individuals such as Kalman III and Orsted. Lara is always assisted by Leo, a sacred beast who the Dorudia tribe serves. Lara has a significant role to play in the future and is destined to be the savior long awaited by the Doldia tribe. Her narrative arc is left unresolved at the end of Mushoku Tensei, implying that she will feature prominently in the forthcoming sequel series. In the last redundancy chapter, Lara and Leo leave home to find a place with high mono concentration. Lara promises Sylphie and Roxy that she'll return with a boy, but by the time she comes back, Rudius and Eris will have already passed away. Ars Greyrat is the third sibling and the first son of Rudius and Eris. He has red hair like his mother and emerald eyes like his father. He seems to be the tallest among his other siblings. Same like his mother when still a child, Ars is a wild kid who loves fighting. He also inherits pervert side of Rudius and his grandfather Paul. Very much like his father, he doesn't discriminate between sizes, big or small, he likes all types of female breasts. He doesn't care much about males and will certainly cry whenever Rudius tries to hold him. He and Rudius are not that close, the exactly opposite of his younger sister Christina. In one of the redundancy side stories, he develops feelings for his aunt Aisha. He later impregnate his aunt at the age of 12. This controversial story was later deleted by the author after receiving backlash from the community. Sigheart Saladin Greyrat is the fourth sibling and the son of Rudius and Sylphiet as well as the main protagonist of the Jobless Oblige side story. Sig has the same green hair as his mom and also has a face similar to Rudius with the same green eyes. Sig's middle name Saladin was given by Perugia's dog, a hero who holds the title Armored Dragon King who sealed away demon god Laplace 500 years ago because of his green hair. His parents are word that he could be potentially the reincarnation of Laplace. Sieg is a kid who really admired all kinds of superhero stories and tried to become one himself. He later then became Alexander Ryback's student, even though he isn't Laplace. Sieg still has Laplace factor, which made him stronger than the usual average normal kid. During the Jobless Oblige event, he is very much like his father, but in the end, he managed to find the answer and decided to help his friend Pax Jr. build a kingdom and Sig later becomes a death god. Lily Greyrat is the fifth sibling and second daughter of Rudius and Roxy. Like her sister Lara, Lily strongly resembles her mother. Lily is a carefree child, however, she is also an airhead and has no sense of direction. Her sense of direction is as reliable as a broken compass, she often loses her way whenever she goes wandering. Lily has a deep fascination for all things related to magical tools and items. She inherited Rudius's magic armor research and dedicated herself to continuing his work. During the events of the Jobless Oblige story, Lily worked for Zanoba Company's development and repair of magical tools division while living in Rudius's house. However, in one of the last redundancy chapters, it is confirmed that she no longer lives in Rudius's house, but still resides in Ronoa. Christina Greyrat is the youngest sibling and daughter of Rudius and Eris. She is very similar to her mother, with long straight red hair and eyes. Chris is a cheerful girl who is always happy when she's with Rudius. 
In contrast to ours, Christina is deeply attached to Rudius. Whenever she cries or feels upset, Rudius is the one who is most capable of comforting her, making her a true daddy's girl. In one of the redundancy chapters, Christina graduates from the Asura Royal Academy. After solving a problem with a noble, she starts a relationship with Edward Animoy Asura, who is the son of Ariel Animoy Asura, the second princess of the Asura Kingdom. Later, Christina begins working at Asura. Did you know that Rudius's kid Sieg was so strong that he was able to break Rudius's finger when he was just a baby? Sieg is stated to be the strongest child among his siblings. This strength may be attributed to his Laplace factor or some other special quality. On one occasion, Rudius recounted a story to Nanahoshi about arm wrestling with Sieg. In order to protect his dignity as a father, Rudius wore MK armor and managed to win. Otherwise, his hand would have been destroyed. This made Nanahoshi wonder if he was truly protecting his dignity. Did you know that among Rudius' children, Lara Grerit poses the biggest threat and is the most feared by Hitogami? According to Hitogami's prediction, she along with Rudius' descendants would team up with Orsted and kill him in the future. Before that could happen, Hitogami tried several ways to prevent her birth. One of his plans was convincing Rudius to acquire a demon eye, which led him to avoid meeting Roxy in the demon continent. Due to Roxy's involvement, Hitogami also attempted to prevent Rudius from saving Zenith in the teleport labyrinth, hoping to avoid their fate in another encounter. And additionally, he tried to make Roxy seriously ill during her pregnancy with Lara, but Rudius' future self intervened to prevent that from happening. In the end, there's nothing Hitogami could do to prevent Lara from being born. Did you know that despite her tender age, Lucy has already embraced the role of a caring big sister? Whenever Lara or Ars feels upset, Lucy promptly rushes over to comfort them. When Sieg was just a baby, she often tended to him and quickly fetched Lilia or Aisha if he began crying. In instances where Lara encounters bullying from other kids, Lucy wastes no time in confronting the situation head on. When Ars causes trouble, Lucy takes it upon herself to scold him, helping him understand the consequences of his actions. Interestingly, she she also treats Clive as her younger brother. Despite the fact that he's technically her half-great uncle, Rudius is genuinely amazed by his daughter's behavior. Lucy not only proves to be a loving sister, but also sets an exceptional example for her siblings, earning their admiration and respect. Did you know that despite her natural talent for anything related to magic tools and magic items, Lily Grerit is quite the airhead. She often experiments with various magic items on herself, just to see how they work. Additionally, she's not very skilled at riding horses. While she can manage to get on one, she's completely at a loss for what to do next. If something catches her attention, she'll immediately head towards it. Even if she's on a horse, she'll quickly dismount and make her way to her point of interest. Her lack of a sense of direction often leads her to lose her way when traveling between her home and workplace. This is precisely why her parents won't allow her to attend school in Asura. Despite her airheadedness, she possesses the talent to inherit Rudius MK Armor research and has been granted a private workshop by Zanova Company. Did you know that before attending school in the Asura Kingdom, Christina expected herself to be like a princess? However, after seeing how the Asura students behaved, she became heiress 2.0. Christina found it challenging to deal with the Asura nobles, who often looked down on commoners and caused trouble. This irritation pushed her to resort to using her fists to solve problems. Whether they acted like jerks or simply ignored her, they all received a punch. Instead of molding her into a princess, Asura Academy awakened her heiress bloodline. After walking in on Aisha and Ars making love in the room, Rudius felt sickened. He couldn't believe what he saw, desperately hoping it was all just a nightmare. Unfortunately, it wasn't. Rudius told them to take a bath and then gathered downstairs in the living room for an explanation. After Aisha and Ars finished, the family meeting started. Rudius and Lilia bombarded Aisha with a bunch of questions, but she skillfully countered each one, insisting that all she did was practice with Ars. Rudius felt hurt when Aisha addressed him as master instead of brother, which added to his frustration, interrupting the tense atmosphere. Sylphie gazed intently at Aisha and asked if she would also take responsibility for Sieg's education. Feeling pressured, Aisha resistantly agreed. 
In the end, Aisha admitted that she loves Ars deeply, and that feeling has grown since his birth, becoming stronger as Ars grew older. With her heart on her sleeve, Aisha begged Rudius to approve their relationship, but he furiously denied her plea. Aisha had never seen her brother's face so filled with rage before. Aisha's heart ached from her brother's rejection. The next day, she and Ars disappeared, leaving behind a single note, we will live our own lives. After Aisha and Ars fled from the house, panic spread among the household. Rudius embarked on a determined quest to gather information about their whereabouts, searching various places in Ranoa City. Unfortunately, Aisha's clever schemes kept her location unknown, effectively misleading Rudius in his pursuit. The relentless search continued for over a year, ever since Aisha left that note, until a breakthrough finally came. Word arrived that Aisha and Ars were sighted in the Millis continent. Finally, after what seemed like an eternity, Rudius, accompanied by his wives, reached their hideout. The moment they approached, a sudden figure emerged from the shadows, it was Ars, firmly blocking their path. After Rudius finally meets Aisha, she is in a pitiful condition. Pregnant and worn down, a heartfelt communication ensues. Despite the challenges, they reconcile, and Rudius eventually approves of their love, though with certain conditions for Aisha to follow. Aisha wholeheartedly agrees. In the end, Aisha and Ars had a son, and they named him Leroy Garrett. Did you know that Rudius' children are immune to Orsted's curse? Orsted possesses a curse that instills fear in all living creatures in the Mashoku Tensei world. This is why he wears a helmet to mitigate the impact of his curse. Yet, Rudius originates from a different world, making him immune to Orsted's curse. This immunity passes down to all of Rudius' children. Additionally, Lucy thinking Orsted was her father due to Rudius rarely being at home, used to play with Orsted on occasion. Similarly, Lara takes great pleasure in frequently pranking Orsted. Did you know that Lara refused to be separated from her parents on the demon continent? When Rudius embarked on tasks and missions for Orsted on the demon continent, Roxy suggested they make a brief stop at Migordia village to visit her parents. Accompanied by Lara, during this visit, Roxy and Rudius discovered that Lara possessed the ability to use telepathy, a trait not inherited by Roxy despite their shared racial lineage. Realizing this, Roxy suggested to Rudius that Lara should temporarily live with her grandparents, fearing potential discrimination that Roxy herself experienced due to her demon race, represented by their distinctive blue hair as well as Lara's meager traits. However, Rudius found it difficult to accept, despite Roxy's concerns, as he desired to live with his children and wives for as long as possible. Sensing Rudius's unease, Roxy withdrew her suggestion. The next day, as they prepared to part ways with Roxy's parents, Lara seemed unwilling to let go of Roxy. She pleaded with her mother not to leave her. Roxy then embraced the trembling Lara, expressing her reluctance to leave her behind, saying, we will always be together, as they both were about to cry. Did you know that? When Rudius's children were introducing themselves to Claire aka Rudius's grandmother, all of them managed to greet her politely, except for Lara. She was just picking her nose, and didn't give a sh did you know that Rudius' son, Seekhart Salad in Grarit, becomes a Cayman rider at night during his days of unemployment, before assisting his friend Pax Jr. Seek spends most of his time being lazy in Sharia City, visiting Lara at the academy and going to the bar. But at night, he dons a lightweight outfit and a full-face helmet given by Orsted, transforming into the Moon Knight he encounters and punches the criminals while yelling, Moonlight Knuckle, Moonlight Strike, and Moonlight Serenade, acting as an ally of justice under the crescent moon. In daylight, he appears to be a jobless individual, but it's just a disguise he gathers crucial information in bars using the acquired information. He detects the presence of evil and takes action. His true identity is the Moon Knight, the ally of justice who shines in the darkness. In other words, he's just jobless with Shunibyo syndrome. Did you know that on Lucy's first day of school, Rudius was extremely worried. He tried to watch over her to prevent anything bad happen. However, Sylphie disagreed. She told him to believe in their daughter's well-being. Despite his promise to Sylphie, Rudius was unable to resist his worries. He disguised himself as Orsted and secretly spied on her at school. However, Rudius' poor spying skills led to his quick capture by Lara, who happened to be present alongside Ars, Eris, and Leo at that time. They were all left confused by Rudius' actions. Surprisingly, Lucy was aware of Rudius' presence and became equally confused by her father's disguise as Orsted. Lucy wondered why he was following her. Meanwhile, Roxy, who was also present at the school, recognized that it was Rudius but decided to let him continue, as long as he didn't disrupt Lucy's day. In the end, Sophie caught him off guard. She was furious and hurt, feeling as though he didn't trust her and Lucy. 
After a heartfelt conversation, they understood each other's perspectives and walked home together. Did you know that after the incest incident, Busi deeply despises R's actions? She holds him responsible for causing significant trouble for their family by absconding with their Aunt Aisha, and perceives his actions as a betrayal to their father. Upon their return home, Lucy casts R's a hard look. Little did she know that in the future, she'd also fall for a relative. While R's faced countless hurdles and punches from heiress to earn acceptance, Lucy received the family's easy pass, and thus, Lucy's disdain for R's actions loving his aunt was as genuine as her love for her half-great uncle. Have you ever considered, despite the controversy surrounding Aisha, ours emerges as a truly remarkable character. In the face of any misstep, he doesn't shy away. He confronts his actions head-on. Moreover, he embraces the role of an unyielding protector for his siblings, and is always the first to stand in their defense. Considering the situations he faced in those circumstances, ours was merely a child in desperate need of guidance. It would be unjust to assign full blame for the influence he endured or more accurately, the influence he was groomed by from Aisha. Even when subjected to Eris's harsh reprisal for leaning too heavily on Aisha and revealing moments of trepidation, Aris swiftly owned up to his lapse, bearing it in full. Beyond this, he clings to an unwavering resolve to shield Aisha and relentlessly pursue self-improvement. As a child, Christina always dreamt of attending school in Asura. Despite Rudius's warnings that it might not be as she imagined, she yearned for a princess-like life there. Nevertheless, Christina remained resolute in her determination to pursue her education in Asura. Upon her arrival at Asura Academy, her expectations crumbled. Just as Rudius had warned, it was entirely different from what she had envisioned. Many of the nobles were insufferable, displaying significant discrimination against commoners. Political factions engaged in fierce rivalry, constantly working to undermine one another. While attending school, Chris often found herself entangled in a web of troubles. The nobles she had once admired turned out to be nothing more than a clique of bullies. They treated fellow students as if they were mere servants simply because they hailed from villages. Due to Chris's bold actions, she made many enemies there. However, she also rallied people who had faced discrimination and helped them fight against injustice. Fortunately, she had a few friends who stood by her side, such as Belle and Edward Anamoy Asura, Ariel's son. Did you know that all of Rudius married children? Lucy, Ars, and Christina all ended up with their relatives. Ars married his aunt, Lucy married her half-great uncle, and Christina married her second cousin. This intriguing pattern might give the impression that Rudius' children had two options, either marry a relative or remain single. Did you know that Lara has the ability to predict the future? Upon hearing that Rudius had decided to go to the Shiron Kingdom to assist Zonoba, Lara suddenly burst into tears. It marked the first time Rudius had witnessed Lara's tears fall so passionately. They were a rarity. Roxy, hearing Lara's cries, tried to comfort her, but the sobs continued unabated. It wasn't until Rudius gently picked her up in his arms that she began to calm down. She stopped crying as soon as she felt Rudius' presence beside her. She clung to him tightly, refusing to release her grip. Sensing Lara's distress, Roxy reassured her. She promised to accompany Rudius to the Shiron Kingdom, ensuring Lara's comfort. Lara gradually stopped crying, knowing now that her father would be safe with his mother. Before the birth of her second child, Sylphie had three dreams of a green-haired boy resembling Rudius, relentlessly pursued by shadows. In the first dream, Rudius managed to rescue him from the shadows. In the second, Rudius was not there, yet Sylphie successfully saved the boy. However, in the last dream, Sylphie was too distant. By the time she finally reached him, the boy had already lost his life. As Sylphie's second child entered the world, the baby's hair was indeed green. The child was later named Seed Guerra. His birth left the family anxious to ensure that his child was not Laplace. Rudius decided to take Seed to Perugius's place. Sophie initially disagreed, but upon hearing that Rudius would stand by Seed's side no matter the outcome, Sophie eventually agreed. Rudius then presented Rudius with a trial. It was there that Seed received his baptism and was given the middle name Saladin. From that point on, his full name became Seagard Saladin Grarit. Did you know that when Lucy was born, Lelia mentioned that Lucy's behavior reminded her of Rudius when he was a child? Upon hearing this, Rudius grew concerned that his child might potentially be a reincarnation just like him. He then spoke English to ensure that she wasn't the same reincarnate being as him, seeing her brother attempt language acrobatics. Aisha couldn't help but chuckle.
Did you know that among Rudius' children, Lars is the one who completely reassures him about his offspring. Rudius often harbors doubts about his children after their birth. For instance, when Lucy was born, Lelia informed him that she resembled Rudius as a baby. This revelation made Rudius anxious. He feared that Lucy might be a reincarnation from another world, just like himself. To dispel his doubts, he began speaking English to Lucy, ensuring she wasn't. A similar concern arose with C, fearing that he might be a Laplace reincarnation. And when Lara was still in Roxy's womb, Rudius noticed Leo often surrounding Roxy's stomach, while not overly concerned. Rudius was a bit uneasy as Lara exhibited little expression and independence even at a young age. However, when Ars was born, Rudius was convinced beyond any doubt. Observing Ars' fondness for breasts, regardless of their size, Rudius was certain that Ars was indeed his child, given this peculiar perverted trait. Ars indeed has a penchant for breasts, even to the extent of wetting himself over them, and to the point that he adores his own mother's breasts. Did you know that after Lara had a great time playing in Orsted's office, Orsted observed her mischievous grin. He couldn't help but wonder about the reason. Behind her naughty expression, upon returning to his office, Orsted discovered a bunch of durian fruits scattered all over his chair. As he began to clean up and collect the scattered fruit, he was in for a surprise. Just as he was about to place the bag in his desk drawer, five grasshoppers jumped out from inside. It took him a moment to realize that he had fallen victim to Lara's prank. Instead of getting upset, Orsted is actually smiled, finding the whole situation entertaining. Did you know that Seagart initially perceived being jobless as a noble existence? After graduating from Asura Academy, Seagart chose to be jobless instead. He claimed that those who are employed or work are excessively obsessed with money, glory, and reputation, and are not commendable but rather pathetic beings. Because in order to obtain all those obsessions, they are willing to flatter their superiors, laugh along even when it's not funny, engage in corruption, or even oppress the weak. Seagart prefers being jobless, because unemployed persons don't do any of that, and that's what makes him think that being unemployed is a noble existence. This still ticks off Eris, leaving her wondering what in the world her son is smoking and why he's proud of being jobless. However, it is revealed that this initial mindset was merely a way for him to run from reality. Did you know that each of Rudia's children is already strong and agile from a young age? This is all thanks to their early training by Eris. In swordsmanship, horse riding, and magic lessons from Roxy, each child exhibits remarkable speed, agility, and swordsmanship skills, with some even surpassing Rudia's. In her youth, Lara managed to defeat her bullies and earn praise from Eris. Notably, dedicating himself to Aisha, Ars became even stronger, eventually reaching the rank of sword saint in the sword god style. He even landed some blows on Eris during their duel. See, not only benefiting from the Laplace factor but also displaying innate talent, received training not only from Eris but also from Kalman III. He became the North King at the age of 15, and eventually ascended to the title of North God, earning one of the seven great power titles, the Death God. Although shy in her early age, Christina would unleash her inner heiress if you pissed her off. Though if there's a fight between siblings, the author stated that Lara and Lucy would wipe the floor, citing an unknown reason. Did you know that despite being the main character in the series, Rudius is not destined to be the chosen one to defeat the main villain? It is not he who is meant to confront Hidogami. Instead, this responsibility lies with his descendants such as Lara Grarit and one of his descendants from Eris. Did you know despite being born from an incestuous relationship between Aisha and ours, Leroy Grarit is actually a healthy child? Leroy possesses Aisha's intelligence but also exhibits a penchant for perversity like ours as he has shown his love for big breasts. Surprisingly, unlike Aisha, who received strict treatment from her mother, Lilia's attitude towards Leroy is completely opposite. She adores him and is quite happy in his presence. Did you know that after Lucy used Sylphie's brush to comb their dog Leo, Sylphie became furious with Lucy? Lucy then apologized and explained that her hair perfectly matched Leo's. This made Rudius chuckle. However, seeing Rudius laughing only added fuel to Sylphie's anger. As a result, she didn't speak to him for days. Did you know that there was a moment when Rudius mistakenly identified Lara as Roxy? He approached and embraced who he believed to be Roxy from behind, only to realize that it was Lara. In that instant, Lara showed understanding remarking that such mix-ups happen and she forgave Rudius. 
Despite her forgiveness, Rudius couldn't forgive himself. Did you know that if Rudius and Sylphie's first child had been a boy, Rudius would have named him Paul? Rudius had initially planned to name their child Sirius if it was a boy and Lucy if it was a girl. However, after a distressing time following the loss of his father, Paul, in the teleportation labyrinth, he reconsidered and decided to name the baby Paul if it was a boy. Fortunately, their child turned out to be a girl, bringing relief to Rudius. They were also relieved that she didn't inherit green hair from her mother. Rudius chose to name her Lucy, derived from the first letters of his own name and Sylphie's name. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 59. Did you know that Perugius had no idea that Rudius' fourth child had already been named Seagart by him? After receiving his baptism on the Divine Continent from Prugius, Sieg, who already had a name, was bestowed another by Prugius Saladin. Upon handing Sieg back to his parents, Prugius declared that from now on, his name would be Saladin. They were confused, but then Prugius reminded Rudius of his promise to grant their child a name as a gift if it was a boy. Sylphie wanted to clarify that Sieg already had a name, but before she could finish her sentence, Prugius interjected with, Don't thank me. While Seagart was already a good name, Rudius couldn't decline Perugius's gift of the Muslim-inspired name. Did you know that the seemingly wholesome new cover of Lara isn't as innocent as it appears? While Roxy was having a conversation with Claire, she revealed that Lara had given her a frog as a present. Roxy quickly apologized for Lara's mischievous behavior. Claire, however, responded nonchalantly, saying there was no need to apologize. She mentioned that she had actually cooked the frog as lunch and returned it to Lara. Surprisingly, Lara seemed to be enjoying the unconventional meal. And yes, it's the very same frog that Lara is holding on the cover. Did you know that when Claire first met Lara, she felt uneasy due to Lara's lack of manners? Among all Rudius's children, Lara's behavior bothered Claire the most, even from the beginning. As each child introduced themselves to her, Lara was already picking her nose in front of Claire. However, as days passed, Claire's perception of Lara changed. Lara successfully found a valuable necklace that Claire's husband had given her, which had been lost for a long time. Lara conveyed that this was a way of repaying Claire for the toad that she had cooked for her. She mentioned that she received the information from Xena and and with the help of Leo. As a result, their relationship started to change, becoming closer. Claire began giving Lara more snacks, and she gained a bit of weight. Despite Lara's mischievous nature, she turned out to be a good child. Eventually, Claire asked Roxy to take care of dear Lara. Did you know that during Rudia's family vacation at his grandmother's residence in Milishin, Ars, Lara, and Sieg almost got kidnapped while exploring Millis by themselves? One day, Ars got bored and decided to sneak out to explore the entire city. He asked Lara to join him and then convinced Sieg to come along, ensuring he wouldn't tell anyone what they were up to. Together, they had fun exploring Millis in the Adventurer's Guild. They were guided by a woman with a big breast. After that, they continued to enjoy their time exploring the city, unfortunately. As the sun went down, they found themselves clueless about how to return to their place. Just as they were about to charge, Leo appeared, and the person behind him was Aisha. After a brief, useless conversation with the kidnappers, Aisha ordered Leo to deal with the criminals. Ensuring Lara was okay, he continued to charge at them, smashing and breaking their bones, tearing them limb from limb. Aisha declared that, This is the consequence of messing with Rudius' children, the chief of Rudo mercenary, and the right hand of the dragon god. Did you know that before the unfortunate event, Ars and Aisha shared a truly wholesome relationship? To Ars, Aisha was like a big sister, always there to cheer him on, even in times of mistakes. Unlike his mother's, Aisha remained calm and patient, offering understanding and support. Initially, Aisha treated Ars as her little brother, feeling immense pride in his achievements among all her nephews. Whenever Ars accomplished something, Aisha genuinely shared in his joy. While Ars's mothers cautioned him against making mistakes, Aisha took a different approach. She allowed Ars to make mistakes, guiding him to realize and learn from them, making it easier for him to understand and grow. Interestingly, Aisha had fallen in love with Ars since he was a baby because he reminded her of Rudius. Unfortunately, as time passed, Aisha's feelings toward Ars gradually spiraled out of control. The same happened for Ars, turning their relationship into something more and ultimately leading to that event. Did you know that Lara is closer to her grandmother than to her parents? Both Zenith and Lara possess telepathic abilities. Lara inherited hers from her racial traits, while Zenith acquired hers through unique Miko powers. Lara loves to be with Zenith and engages in conversations through telepathy 
telepathy, they are often seen together, despite family members like Lucy finding them odd. Because they appear to chat while remaining silent, Zenith at least has someone to converse with, and that's her dear granddaughter. Did you know that in a Christmas side story, Rudeus had a battle with his son, Sieg, for the right to become Santa? Every year, Rudeus, dressed as Santa Claus, would generously gift his children. However, due to falling into Lara's evil traps, his true identity as Santa was exposed. This revelation upset Sieg, realizing that Santa had been his father all along. As time passed, Rudeus wanted to keep being Santa for his grandchildren. However, having revealed himself, Sieg insisted he and Lara take over. Rudeus refused to step aside, stating Sieg would have to fight him for the title. The battle between between father and son commenced. In the end, Rudius lost, but Sieg complained that Rudius hadn't given his best effort. Rudius explained that, regardless of the circumstances, he couldn't bring himself to go all out against his own family. After their heartfelt collision, they agreed to both be Santa. However, their plans took a turn when Orsted expressed his desire to be Santa this year. Sieg declared that Orsted, along with Alec, would have to defeat them to claim the role. And thus, the two versus two battle for the right to sneak into houses and give presents began. Did you know that despite being a loving father, aside from Christina, Rudius is quite distant from his children. His kids have always known that their father is an incredibly important person. He's always busy and due to his work. He's rarely at home. Viewing him as a figure of high importance makes them feel somewhat hesitant towards him. Seeing her father prioritize his work made Lucy misunderstand and start influencing her siblings, leading them to believe that their father didn't have high expectations for them, which left them quite disappointed. Since then, except for Christina, his kids often avoid him whenever he's around, especially Sieg and Lucy. Though Lara and Lily are more apathetic towards him, they at least don't actively avoid him. However, over time, this slowly changed after Rudius reconciled with them, such as when he accepted Lucy's relationship with Clive, allowed C to help his friend Pax Jr., and of course, accepted R's relationship with his aunt. Did you know that among all of Rudius' children, Ars is considered the most distant from his father, while his sister, Christina, is practically glued to Rudius. Ars rarely communicates with him. This distance isn't solely due to his father's busy schedule, but also stems from the Aisha incident during his early years, leading Ars to live a separate life. It seems as if he's the only one added to the family, without developing a deep connection with Rudius. However, in Rudius' retiring age, Ars does continue his father's work in helping Orsted. This suggests a potential off-screen relationship that may have developed between them. Did you know that despite being a death god, one of the seven great powers in the future, and also the strongest among Rudius's children, Sieg was actually quite whiny and fearful in his early years. Sieg was always found sticking close to Lara, often seeking refuge behind Ars's back. Whenever Ars left him alone, Sieg would inevitably burst into tears. Despite receiving training from Alexander Kalman III, he remained somewhat scared of others. This proves that even the death god had his tender beginnings. Did you know that, despite Lara constantly teasing and pranking Sieg, they share an unexpectedly close bond. Among all of Rudius's children, Sieg and Lara seem to have the strongest connection, even though Lara consistently refers to him as stupid due to his obsession with being Cheddarman, and Sieg regards her as messy, rough, and peculiar leading a somewhat crude lifestyle, and always seeming annoyed by her pranks, they still stick together in all circumstances. Moreover, despite Lara being aware of Sieg's secrets, she firmly refuses to reveal them to anyone. This is what makes Sieg feel comfortable being with her. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, before Sieg departs on his journey, Lara tells him that no matter what happens, they're still family. This hints that in the future, they might have to face each other due to the influence of Hitogami. Did you know that when Rudius is gone, Hitogami would make his descendants turn against each other? During their final farewell conversation in the Void World, Hitogami asserted that with Rudius gone, he was now free to act as he pleased. He vowed to dismantle all of Rudius's hard work, distorting the truth and inciting conflict among his descendants. Hitogami declared, that Rudius could no longer prevent his own descendants from killing each other. He would manipulate and control their fates, leading them to turn against one another. After hearing enraged words from Hitogami, Rudius simply scratched his head because it itched. Seeing Rudius so calm enraged Hitogami even more, prompting him to ask why he was so calm about his statement. Rudius simply replied, because I'm dead. 
After graduating from Asura Academy, Pax Jr. revealed his plan to establish governance over a perilous wasteland and secure a crucial stronghold for the Kingdom of King Dragon. He implored Sieg to join him. In realizing his dream of establishing an independent nation, Sieg felt hesitant and conflicted. On one hand, he believed that Rudius, his father, needed him to marry Serial, Ariel's daughter, to strengthen ties with the Asura Kingdom. On the other hand, aiding Pax's ambition could jeopardize his father's alliances, particularly with the King Dragon Kingdom, a crucial ally with plans to confront Laplace in the future. Sieg was still grappling with this decision. Since Sieg had not yet responded, Pax told him to forget about it. In the end, he returned to Ranoi and remained unemployed for a year. Acting as the Moonlight Knight, he helped people and defeated criminals, though deep down, he was merely searching for his true self. Sieg often avoided his father, until one day, his Seisho suggested he talk with him. Despite his initial cringe at his father's actions, Sieg finally seized the opportunity to have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation. His resolve solidified, and he decided to assist his friend Pax Jr. Before setting out, Rudius advised Sieg to bid a proper farewell to everyone. Sieg took this opportunity to express his purpose and heartfelt gratitude to his mothers and grandmothers. Learning that Sieg might not return, his mothers, especially Sylphie, were saddened but offered wholehearted support. When he spoke with his siblings, Lara assured him that they would always be family, regardless of time. Then, he visited Alec and had a farewell duel. Before departing, Rudius encouraged Sieg to give his best. With these farewells, Sieg left his hometown, journeying to towards his friend Pax. Upon arriving at Pax's location, Sieg found Pax on the verge of execution by the indigenous tribe. Swiftly, he rescued Pax and declared his unwavering support for Pax's ambitions. Decades later, Sieg stood as Pax's right hand, ascending to the ranks of the Great Seven Powers, bearing the title Death God. With the formidable alliance they built, they forged their path towards independence from the Dragon Kingdom. Did you know that upon graduating from Asura Academy, Christina unveiled her determination to assist Ariel in reshaping Asura Nation for a brighter future? Despite harboring a lifelong dream of residing in Asura, her time at the school exposed harsh realities. Her initial fondness for the nation proved to be a delusion, as she uncovered widespread corruption and a scarcity of genuinely virtuous individuals. However, amid these challenges, Christina encountered numerous hard-working individuals striving to improve the country, including Her Majesty Ariel. This realization fueled Christina Christina's desire to stay and contribute as a civil official, expressing her intention to work under Luke. Chris's resolute determination struck a chord with Rudius, reminiscent of someone from his past resourceful, efficient, and driven by strong ambitions. Unfortunately, these ambitions remained unfulfilled due to a teleportation incident. Notably, Christina bears a striking resemblance to that person, none other than her grandfather, Philip Boreas Grarit. Did you know that Lara is the last of Rudius's children to leave the house? When they inquired about her sudden departure, Lara refused to explain, simply stating that she would lose. Rudius was confused. Roxy then explained the possibility of Lara's actions. It seemed Lara's recent foresight influenced her decision to embark on a distant adventure. Lara confirmed this, explaining that she wanted to conduct experiments and search for a place. With a high mana concentration, she promised that she would return with a boy, unfortunately. By that time, Rudius and Eris would have already passed away. Rudius understood the situation and allowed Lara to leave before she embarked. Her parents gave her some of their belongings for her adventure, including Rudius's robe. Together with Leo, she became the last child to leave the nest. 